Hello, this is Morning Prime. Many thanks for joining us uh, this morning. If you're just waking up, of course, it's still but a dark uh, day and a moment in the country. For the next three days, the country's officially mourning following the address of uh, President William Ruto yesterday after the final salute of uh, the former of the General Francis Ogola, who was born 1962 and died yesterday, 2024, alongside other gallant soldiers who are still being celebrated and mourned across the region. Well, let us now get into a bit of politics with the panelists in studio. And it is a youthful uh, kind of conversation. In fact, years ago, it was a narrative that the youth are leaders of tomorrow. A point came where the youth said, we are not leaders of tomorrow. The time is now. And the question is, with the changes and the revolutions and the devolutions uh, that are happening, have the youth done anything differently with power sitting at the table for those who have been, uh, of course, lucky enough or chosen by you, the electorates, to represent them? But here is a nutshell of what's happening in matters politics to commence this conversation. The Orange Democratic Party, ODM, has formally endorsed its party leader, Raila Odinga, for the African Union Commission chairperson position. Although members were not concerned about who will inherit Raila should he clinch the position, the party officials affirmed that ODM will remain strong even as they called for the full implementation of the NADCO report, as Grace Nganga now reports. ODM party members were surprised in February when it emerged that their party leader, Raila Odinga, will be vying for the position of chairperson of African Union Commission. In its meeting Thursday, the party fully endorsed his bid. Starting with President William Ruto and the government to advocate, to work for, to lobby and to stand with you to make sure that this African Union Commission chairperson come to pass. It is good for us in ODM, it is good for us as Kenya, and it is good for our continent, Africa. The party officials dismissed reports of an imminent split in the hierarchy should Raila exit the local politics. Addressing the officials today, Raila said it was time for the party to be even stronger as he is not the party but rather a member just like other members. <laughs> Badi, Sifuna, Nani, Ichama in Aitaji, Oparanya, Ichama in Aitaji, Jo, Ichama in Aitaji, Sifuna, in Aitaji, Summat, Naitaji, Badi, Nataji, Kilamutu. There was unnecessary excitement about who will be the party leader. They came artificial groups. I was even grouped in a group that I don't know where that group was decided. Joe was put in another group. And then we had unnecessary remarks from other quarters. I will plead with you leaders. When you are a national leader, you go out there, weigh what you are going to say in the public. Size ya kiatu ya Raila Odinga mimi nikitia mguu na oparanya kitia mguu bado hatutoshi The party also called for the immediate implementation of the NADCO report as it was a negotiation to ease the tension between the government and the opposition As we speak we are focused in ensuring that we implement the NADCO report and especially or particularly the passage of the processing of the bills that have emanated from the NADCO process. I will urge our minority leader here to make sure that that report is implemented to the letter because most of the issues that are there were very, many beneficial to our people and to our party as ODM. During the National Governing Council, changes in the party leadership was also announced with Kisi Governor Simba Arati replacing Janet Ongera as one of the National Deputy Chairpersons after she quit in 2022. Catherine Omanyo was also appointed as one of the Deputy Secretary General, replacing Florence Mutua, 
who also resigned from the post in 2022. Others who are appointed include Kale Bamisi as Deputy Organizing Secretary and Eddie Oketch, Secretary for Disaster and Human Affairs. Grace Nga KT News, Nairobi. All right, uh, that's about party politics. And uh, let's start with uh, the voice of Frederick Okango, who's the Secretary of Political Affairs, Azimio. Um, uh, Raila Odinga is saying, ODM is strong with or without him. Is Azimio strong then? Um, uh, is ODM stable? Because uh, ODM is within Azimio. Um, so uh, this conversation ongoing, in fact, you've had one of the leaders saying there was some sort of excitement on who shall inherit uh, the ODM leader, what most people, who some people have referred to as the enigma. Thank you, Anki. Okay. I've always said before that uh, there's no one, and absolutely no one, who can purport to inherit Raila Amolo Odinga. You can never inherit a legend like Raila Amolo Odinga. And in any case, in a democracy like Kenya, I've always said that this is not there is no emperor's tool to, to inherit. And for those who would want to be like Ramolo, Raila Molodinga in future, they can only be like Amolo, Raila Molodinga in pieces. And I mean that because Raila Amolo Odinga is the leader of Azimio La Moja One Kenya Coalition. Raila Amolo Odinga is the leader of ODM. Raila Amolo Odinga is the leader of the Luo region. Raila Amolo Odinga has been the opposition figure in Kenya. And therefore, those four parts, as it is today, no one and absolutely no one can fit. But we can have people who can try and follow their path in those four segments differently. Having said that, mm -hmm. uh, political parties have a provision in Article 91 that require them to conduct their affairs in certain manners. And I think what ODM did yesterday is good for democracy. I'm and sorry many to interject. Article 91 of... Basic political principles of political parties. Okay. That is Article 91 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. All right. And... Uh, if, if, if you look at what political parties are going to do, and I'm sure including UD will do that, they are putting their houses in order to prepare for grassroots elections. They are putting their houses in order to mm. prepare for election of their leaders, right from the grassroots to the national level. And that is good. And you know political parties are governed by their party constitution, rules and regulation, the constitution of Kenya, and the political parties act. And therefore, I must commend mm -hmm. the ODM party having gone a notch higher to prepare for that. I'm sure other parties will be doing the same. You asked a question. Yes. Is Azimio as strong as ODM? Or is ODM as strong as Azimio? Azimio is a big tent. And ODM is a constituent party in Azimio. Mm -hmm. And as I said, as it is today, the leader of Azimio La Moja, one Kenya coalition party, is Raila Amolo Odinga. Going forward, we are going to see, because you, initially, there was some a bit of excitement, as uh, uh, Honorable Oparanyan Joe put it. But you see, in politics, that is the excitement in politics. Politics is about internal and external competition. So within ODM, there are competitions of who would be the next party leader when Raila Molodinga assumes office as the chair of AUC. So that is a party politics. I'm sure they'll manage it, mm. and I've seen that they are doing it in the best way they can, and that's why I think the talk is that now let ODM work towards building a national party that it has been. And I'm happy when they said that when Raila Molodinga said in his meeting yesterday that he would not want to see a tribal outfit. All right. If you read the history of ODM, it's one of the parties that, in my view, has had that national appeal with branches, with the leadership that are not only from one region, and therefore it automatically qualifies as a national party. 
So we, we, we would want to see many parties do that. But uh, the issue that uh, I am very interested in, and I, uh, as, as somebody who participated in, you remember the NADCO report that the leaders have said that, you know, they would want to see full implementation right. of the NADCO report. Yes. I fully endorse such sentiments from our minority leader of and I and the leadership of ODM because we are going into an issue of elections in the next three years. And today, as we sit here, Anki, mm. we don't have mm -hmm. IEBC. Mm -hmm. As we sit here, we don't have a selection panel. And therefore, one of the key issues that was negotiated in the document and from the concerns of the people was the issue of electoral justice and related matters. Therefore, if there's a takeaway that I can take from that meeting of ODM right. is that the implementation of NADCO should happen pronto. I want to come back to you because you've touched on some very key issues and Kenyans are equally concerned about that point of an electoral body being put in place. Let's hear from um, uh, <laughs> Maliba. W what is happening? Before I talk about what is uh, purportedly a disquiet in, in, in Kenya Kwanza, let's, let's look at what is happening in ODM. First of all, uh, what comes out of that NGC, it looks like uh, they met, first of all, to endorse uh, right. uh, the person of the right prime min uh, the, the right uh, honorable Raila Odinga for the AUC seat. Uh, of course, it's a, a good gesture of solidarity. But if that entirely is what they meant to do, then uh, I think uh, they really should actually have done it differently. Probably in a rally like they've done, but generally that is not why they met. So I think the NGC met for purposes of number one to deal with the issues of election. And uh, if truly we are, a, the ODM is a democracy, because Kenya is a mid-range performing democracy, at least how, that's how we are rated. The issue of succession should not be a taboo discussion. Somehow everybody discussing uh, succession, they scattered around that. A bunch of hypocrites meeting on national television and talking about, not talking about succession yet. Tomorrow, in funerals, in villages and rallies, wherever they will be, they will be talking about who is succeeding who. It's Oparanya, it's Joho, it's Wandai, who actually have been fighting in funerals. And while they meet here, what do you call those people who in funerals? It's Mbadi on this side, it's Wandai on the other side, it's Oparanya on the other side, it's Joho on the other side, who have continued. Actually, Joho at some point organized what I would call a raiding party to go to Kakamega and start campaigning from that end. But when they meet here at the NGC, they are talking about uh, succeeding Baba is not an issue. The real issue in that particular NGC should have been two things. Succession and the grassroots elections. Any other thing was actually window dressing because we cannot be a country that cannot talk. Sensitive institutions like KDF, older than ODM by far, holding a bigger mandate than ODM talks about succession in a very structured and open way. Somehow, the people who affiliate to ODM and who are friends to that particular team, including Okango here, are scatting around this succession thing as if we are talking about climbing, uh, I don't know whether it's the mountain of the Lord, a very difficult process. It cannot be that when it comes to succession, knowing too well, Anki, just wait, knowing too well that no one has ever argued with age and won. Age has beat every human being that ever lived. It is a demographic imperative, and therefore talking about succession should not be something that we are making it look like it's philosophy. We are using a lot of poetry and hard conversations. All right. Uh, Anki, let me put it this way. And from the toolbox of thought, let me pick a spanner and throw it into the works. One, that as a matter of fact, from yesterday's meeting by ODM, it is now clear as it was not even to ODM before perhaps, that to every epoch comes an end. Raila Odinga coming to a realization that actually his stay at that party has now come, you know, is, is facing its sunset. One thing that comes to the fore is that political parties in this country, including of course starting with ODM, are successfully failing at creating spaces for as I've said this before, mentorship, ideological growth, germination, and maturation. Today, for instance, as there has been this uh, uh, push and pull between Joho and Oparanya, are they pushing and pulling on the basis of ideological drive? No. 
Has somebody said that, for example, and Okango is here, mm -hmm. is affiliated to you know uh, that party by virtue of um, it belonging to the umbrella union that uh, Azimio is, that Joho is not being propped to take over after Raila on any ideological strength. Neither is Oparanya. Section 3 of the Political Parties Amendment Act 2022 provides that every political party must have a statement of ideology. Ask Okango here, if at all even ODM has got a critical statement of ideology right. that any third member on the street of ODM can pick out and say, actually, this is our ideological standing. The other thing is that when we look at transition within political parties, because they're public entities, all right. the public funds political parties. And so, therefore, the public owns political parties. The public must drive political parties. By that understanding, and I like what Raila Odinga said yesterday, that ODM is not Raila Odinga and mm -hmm. Raila Odinga is not ODM. Mm -hmm. That was profound, as a matter of fact. But still, these political parties are run, quote unquote, as personal kiosks, still. Today, even as Oparanya, for instance, and Joho, are looking at issues of taking over. The entire Western Luonians and parts of coast are looking over their shoulders, trying to hear whispers. Who is it that perhaps Rai Odinga prefers? That Rai Odinga thank you. prefers. Okay. And that whichever side he may potentially signal, that is the person that will take over. And therefore, as we look at youthful leadership, with the example of Maliba that has given about the military, let's face it. Look at the gallantry of the men and women in service police or the military. They are young people who are taking over, who are holding the service in this country. That, for example, even as we reflect and mourn our departed soldiers of yesterday, whose gallantry actually will not be sustained by the words they use or the eloquence of tributes on this table and elsewhere. All right. We must remember that the youth are actually the vertebral column of military, of police, and therefore the youth actually can be the vertebral column of leadership in this country. This lazy thinking on the part of some that the youth cannot take over positions of responsibility, whether as a cabinet secretary, principal secretary, or whatever kind of role, is something that must be pushed to the backwaters of thought. Because people here, like even myself, Okango, uh, Madam Jokimboshe here, a distinguished leader, Maliba here, we are people, and I'm not requesting the president to appoint me, but I'm saying that we are people capable of service in this country, and this country requires young people at the helm. In fact, I would want to be impressed, if at all, other than Joha and Oparanya, we get very younger people getting to the helm of ODM. But who would be this younger people? Let's hear from Joki. I, I, let me just hear from her first. Because you're equally listening through this. What, what Do you agree with any of the panelists? What's your, what's your line of thought? You know, it's um, Anki. Mm. The issue that we are discussing, we are trivializing it to some extent are we? by looking at it as an ODM arrangement. Mm. It speaks to a bigger issue of the need to build democratic institutions. And as my brother Javis, Javas has properly indicated, you see, ODM is a political party. Political parties in Kenya are funded by our money. So they have a duty to each and every one of us. Political parties in Kenya, we have invested so much in them that we even have a political parties act. We continue to invest so much in them that we even have a political parties disputes tribunal. In fact, as a country, we know that the two most emotive issues, politics mm -hmm. and land, those two kinds of disputes can bring this that country, as we have seen, to the ground. It is therefore a great trivialization of the politics of this country if we cannot, as uh, many of my colleagues here have said, mm -hmm. build institutions that go beyond individuals. And for me, this is actually the ultimate test of whether or not, or the kind of legacy that Raila Odinga, um, you know, former prime minister, has then been able to create. It is at this time that we will see whether 
he's able, you see even when we talk about YK92, for instance, when we talk about the former President Moi, we can see his students and, and that they have been able to do certain things, whether we like him or hate him, we can see that, uh, you know, and, and people make a joke and say okay. that he said that Kanu will rule for more than 100 years or something like that. And we can see some of his students continuing to, to be leaders in, in that respect. You know, when uh, the former president of Tanzania died, Magufuli, there was a very more or less seamless transition to Samia Suluhu, isn't it? We have seen even in South Africa where political parties have actually been strengthened so that we know if you are the president by virtue of this political party, you misbehave, we send you home, we replace you. So we must get to a place in the country because we are financing political institutions, because we are spending so much time and energy on them, to then require that one, they have objective structures on succession, two, they have objective structures on decision making so that we can hold them to account. Even though I hear we are talking a lot about uh, ODM, even UDA has a problem. You know, in terms of decision making, we are finding Kenya Kwanzaa uh, parliamentarians unable to disagree or to raise concern. Even when they know their leader is wrong, they are not able to speak out and, and hold him to account. Yet they have a duty to also ensure that their manifesto that then is expectedly aligned with the constitution. I'm, I'm not sure there's a general remark with someone who are Mushomba. And, and, and I'm about to get there. Okay. So we have people like uh, the, like uh, Mushimu Amodoni Wamushomba, yes. Radoni Wamushomba, who has really stood out. And then you see, like, sometimes she comes even under attack for trying to do that. It should be. Relax, my brother uh, Maliba. Why is she the only? Why is she one of the few? And we have seen uh, Kinababu and and Muheshimiwa, many of them coming together. But so far, I think they're only about 17. Is Babu criticizing How ODM? many? You know, Maliba, you you need to learn to to conduct yourself properly, uh, because it is part of of the decision making and the structure that you're talking about. And you have spoken very well about structure and decorum, even within political parties. You know, this is our country after all is said and done. The problem with democracy, Anki, is that the moment President Ruto became the president, he became president of the entire country. So all of us as Kenyans have a right to his service because he performs his duties because of our money and because of the resources that we put in government and because then of the duty that each one of us know. Maliba, relax. It is, it is, it is so the question of succession, right. the question of structured decision making, we must hold our leaders to account. So then we are able to transition beyond them. Mm. Maliba has very well said something like age cannot be ignored. People come and go. Mm. But do we have institutions, democratic institutions like political parties that have been built to stand the test of time? I'll come back with you. Yes, uh, Okango. I think you love to... Because the question that Maliba asks is it's, succession is not a taboo kind of conversation. You know, you know, this should be... Maliba is the last person to lecture our constituent party ODM on what ODM should do. Because shortly I'll be going into what UDA is not doing and they never do. Number two, Maliba cannot purport to be planning for ODM how they should conduct their NGC. Maliba should not say what should be on the agenda of the NGC of ODM because he's not a member, neither is he a member of any constituent party affiliated to ODM or Azimio for that matter. Now, ideologically, or what you call ide ide ideological standing, as my good friend uh, Javas has said, if you read today's newspaper published by the Standard Group, Raila Moludinga says that he emphasized that the party election should be held on the platform of policy, ideology, and beliefs of ODM, not tribal, race, gender, region. Raila Molodinga actually borrows from the provisions of 91 on the basic requirements of a political party. And again, it reflects in the political parties act because no party shall be formed on that basis. So he knows that. And Raila Molodinga as a leader believes in succession. And uh, sorry, I'll tell you why. The reason, if you look at the basic requirement of political party, 
It says that they shall have democratically elected national leaders. That is how succession comes in. When Raila Molodinga exits the party, the reason why they are conducting grassroots elections is because they would want to have national leaders from the grassroots to the top. That succession will happen. Number two, um, Jamal has talked about of, uh, he has talked about young leaders. Right. Some of us, if we were never given opportunity in political parties, at the age of 30, I had joined politics. I was a secretary general at that time of a political party. And we have grown all the way up to now, while we might not be youth, but we are youthful. <laughs> and we believe that the opportunities that we have been given is because of the spaces that we have occupied. So I strongly believe that as we go into these grassroots elections, we shall see the promotion of the special interest groups, the women, people living with disability, the ethnically marginalized, and the youth in those spaces. And they must take those spaces because no one will give them. And lastly, I know for sure that if there is a party in this country that we are yet to see the chaotic nature of it, is UDA. Because already we are being told of fold, not to fold. So let's talk about democratic governance but we stem it from the political parties and look at the history of political parties. UDA has no history. Maliba cannot tell about U history of UDA. The party is barely how many years? A, a year two. So what we are planning for mm. as constituent parties of Azimio mm. is to grow our parties, elect leaders, and sustain the democratic principles. What we want to see all right. from all political parties is a process that is believable. A process that everyone comes out of it believing that they went in that grass election, won or lost fairly. I've always told Maliba that as a young person who works for UDA, who advises the president at UDA House, should also take mantle of leadership. And I know he's capable. But before he criticizes some of these parties, he must look at their party and see the right. cracks. The cracks in UDA are bigger. We are going to see a fallout very soon. We are going to see people running out of UDA to join other parties that because they don't be yes because okay. they don't believe now uh, before i hear from Maliba, i have just a few questions and i i'm not sure this comes to your ears as well go ahead um uh, raila odinga and especially after 2022 elections there was some conversation around mm -hmm. why you did not clinch the seat as a azimiola umoja mm -hmm. Fingers pointing at one centralized, you know, place of power, mm -hmm. um, disorganization in the Azimio coalition. Mm -hmm. Perhaps if you could just, you know, cl cl create clarity in what you have said that, um, you know, people need a believable process. There has been a, a constant, you know, um, uh, it may be alleged mm -hmm. that uh, Raila Odinga purportedly has to lean towards somebody mm -hmm. to make them believable for the rest of uh, the supporters of either Azimio or ODM. Uh, and and I, I'm happy those are rumors because, are they? of course they are. Okay. I don't want to go into the 2022 election because if we are to go into that issue, this show will not end because I know for sure that our candidate, then Raila Odinga, did the best he could to win the presidency, okay? And I don't want to go there. Number two, Raila Amolo Odinga that we know, the Raila that the Kenyan people know, is Raila Amolo Odinga who is tested and tried. Raila Amolo Odinga, the leader who believes in democracy. And therefore, all these issues that are now emerging, they're not emerging because Raila Odinga lost elections or won, no. They're emerging because Raila Odinga, as a statesman, believes in progression. He believes that there's more he can do at a better stage. We want to say today that as we progress our constituent parties and ODM together, we wish Raila Molodinga the okay. best right. in whatever he wants to uh, take, uh, uh, in where I want to go. You know, that one will happen. My friend uh, Okango is a court poet upon the mole hill of politics. And one thing that he has not responded to is this. When he was citing the issue, of course it's not Raila Odinga's spokesperson, but the thing is, when he says that Raila Odinga talked about the issue of ideology and policies, the question is what ideological standing or grounding propels ODM. As a matter of fact, even as a as a party... Will be answered by the ODM Secretary General who is very eloquent on it, Sifuna. He cannot answer, ask me that question. If he asked me, 
What is the ideological standing of Azimio? I would give him. Please, that. but he's asking about the audience, so I'll uh, not answer about that. Allow, allow, allow me to just uh, chime into a number of things. Number one, <coughs> I'll start from where he left and then walk backwards. First of all, Okango should be the very last person who would actually speak. Okay. Okango should be the very last person to speak about party elections when he is a member of Kanu that did elections 40 years ago. That he has no Again, he's planning to speak for about us. it. Number two, but he is a, he, number two, let's get to Azimio. Azimio, Azimio is Azimio. not a political party according to the law because, number one, it does not have 24 offices. He cannot point to any. It only has got two members and the, the <coughs> second one left. The first one left, actually. It, one? it was Martha Karua and Raila Odinga. Martha Karua has since gone back to uh, NAC and Raila Odinga has reverted back to... Actually, Raila is, is actually factual, exiting that. Is it factual? Is Do it, they is have 24? Let's go. There okay. is there's a way parties are registered and everything else. Right. So on that particular end, a person who comes from Kano that did elections 40 years ago, when literally all of us here were young, should not be talking about elections and lecturing a party that is actively doing elections at the moment. Uh, that, be that as it is, there's this fallacy, because I have worked for and with young people most of my adult life, there's this fallacy that young people are entitled to leadership. And as a youth mentor, as a person who's worked with them for a very long time, I need to put this straight. All right. Number one, being young is not a qualification and an entitlement to leadership. You must work for it. Power is not given, it is taken. That we must tell young people out there. And that the youth are not a voting block. I have said that a lot of times, that they can be so eloquent on this show as you see them here, very eloquent on social media. But when they go to the voting booth, they vote like their grandmothers in the village. There is no difference between the people who've not gone to school and those who've gone to school, especially in the way we vote, because we go back to our ethnic cocoons. So you don't see school, you don't see education, you don't see exposure in the way they vote. Count the votes, see how people vote. That is the truth. Because when it comes to numbers, numbers are absolute. If it's politics, it's the number. So if young people really want to take control and be at the table, there is one ticket. And that ticket, besides the constitution and the uh, institutions that we, we actually have, they also have to do the working. And that working means that they have to organize themselves. They have to go to political parties. The way Okango here comes from Kanu, but he is the Azimio uh, uh, spokesperson here. You see, they go Secretary out and work hard. Political affairs. Yes. Uh, for, at one point, he's actually the spokesperson. <laughs> another person, uh, at another time, he's actually uh, right. secretary. So, uh, okay. be that as it may. Two, when, when we're talking about uh, uh, guys going out and talking about uh, raise issues about uh, I cannot speak for ODM, we are here as a commentary, all of us. She's, uh, she's here, she has got a right, even if she doesn't belong to any party. I know that, she doesn't belong to any party, she's neutral. But we cannot then tell her that she cannot speak about UDA simply because she's not a member, and then she cannot talk about or make a comment about ODM or any other party. We are here as a commentary to inform, and every Kenyan has got a right to actually do an input into these issues. So. Be that as it may, it's important for us to actually say that when it comes to succession, let us not make it a taboo discussion. Let us not make it so big. Uh, number uh, three, I think when uh, she raises issues about uh, UDA and leaders not speaking out, this is where it starts. If Anki, you cannot raise issues in your own house, it's unlikely that you'll raise issues to the neighbor. So, and that's why I actually was pointing out, that in UDA, for example, our members of parliament have confronted the president. Uh, when things didn't look right, all of us, and it was reported, they went to state house and told him we don't lie, look at this. And he had also his balanced response to that. We've seen our members of parliament, and none of them have been jailed the way they were jailed during uh, Okango's watch in government in the last five years. When anyone that actually was opposed or raised a contradictory opinion was actually jailed, was taken to court, was Kamata Kamata Friday. It was there to teach a little fear of God for all politicians that were against the leadership then. So, be that as it may, I do not think that uh, we really need to take time and uh, then try to say which one is more rotten. You know, a, a competition between which one is good and which one is bad. What we need to actually be advocating for is good practices. Right. And she spoke so well about institutions, right. building institutions that grow. Because again, 
we can pretend as much as we want. Political parties for the longest time have been special purpose vehicles for people to win elections. And after that, they are discarded. As long as we do not have strong institutions, our democracy remains in jeopardy because just imagine that after every election, you see a new vehicle. So when are we going to talk about issues like ideology? When are we going to actually build programs where you can actually bring on board new leaders? We talk about succession, but even as we speak about succession, if a party does not have longevity, issues about succession, bringing in new blood will not occur. Because today it's a rainbow. After four years, you have got uh, PNU. Uh, the other day is NAC. Okay. It's a different one. So it's true. Let us talk about these issues without necessarily comparing or rather making it, bringing out trivia for purposes of scoring cheap uh, goals. It's, it's interesting because in America we have the, the Democrats and Repu uh, Republicans. But they have got over a thousand parties. Uh, uh, and over, okay, fine. But we also know that the sitting president was in the Jubilee um, when he was a sitting deputy president and then they formed Kenya Kwanzaa. But is that the culture? But Maliba is saying, look, are we, is, there, uh, is there irony at this point in time? What I'll, I'll say is just a, my, uh, uh, just a legal intervention here. My brother has said that uh, power is grabbed. It's not given. It's, I agree with taken. him. You, you, you take it. I agree with him. Right. So you have work to work towards it. But he has also said that it is not a right for the youth to expect to get it. I didn't use the word right. Okay. I'd like to say that Article 55B of the Constitution actually gives it as a right for the state to take deliberate measures to make sure, and I, I can say it here, that the youth have opportunities uh, to participate in political and other spheres of life. So it is not, and that is why even the Registrar of Political Parties, if you submit a list and it doesn't meet the youth requirement, that list will come back. So it is not a favor for the youth to be involved in political parties and to be included. It is a right in the Constitution. The question is, are they included based on the fact that they are youth, they are young, or on merit, or they, they, they have there something to show in value? But that merit, even, you know, the thing is, and why the youth, and it's considered a marginalized group, for instance, all right? So that then, even when you look at the wording of the Constitution, so that as you're looking at transitions, for instance, you have seen even some regimes where, and, and you can see even the current political landscape, you find that the names that are there are still the names that we grew up listening to. I mean, we know the price of politics, including how much you invest in, in, in getting elected. I recently participated in an election. So, the you know, uh, yes, right. and, and, and some of us here and other elsewhere mm. who are less below 50 years old have participated as candidates. So it is an expensive process. And that is why the Constitution acknowledges you may not be a billionaire at that stage. So there should be a deliberate attempt to bring you on board. And that is why we are saying the obligation for political parties to have a transition mechanism and a succession mechanism that brings everybody on board is not a favor. It is a right within the Constitution. Uh, yeah. Uh, recently, and I agree with the Njoki, <coughs> the Kenya Kwanzaa Triumvirate, uh, President William Ruto, Rigadi Gashagwa, Deputy President, and uh, Prime Cabinet Secretary Musalia Mudavadi, uh, spoke about the necessity of younger people seizing opportunities. And I remember that most recently when there was the political turbo charge within uh, Andindi Nyoro mm -hmm. and the fear that maybe possibly perceptively he was trying to upstage the DP, the president said, well, these young people have got political spaces to engage and that they are going and willing and ready to mentor younger people in these political spaces to take off opportunities. And the thing is, we must also have younger people ready themselves for these opportunities. Yes, this power is not given. You need to offer, to avail yourself for these opportunities. If Madam Jokimboshe uh, here would not have offered herself as a candidate in LSK, who would have known that she is ready to serve, not just in LSK, but also in other political capacities and opportunities? My brother Maliba here is a career candidate in elections. He has contested nearly every election, I think, since he left high school. And 
The issue is it has honed his political skills. It is reading him. Okango here has been oscillating like a pendulum, moving like an evil spirit from one political party to the other. It has been preparing him for opportunities and possibly in the foreseeable future, he may be a distant deputy leader in, our, in an opposition political party. And so the thing is, younger people in this country must seize opportunities, must show their intellectual, moral readiness for leadership, right. etc. You see, it's William Cullen Bryant who said that truth crushed to earth will always rise again. The truth here is that mm -hmm. no older leader in a political party will want to yield an opportunity just for someone or call you from the marketplaces and tell you, hey, Anki, there is a seat here, come and become secretary for this political party. And so first of all, given Article 38 of the Constitution that you have a right as a Kenyan to participate in political affairs, join a political party, campaign for a political issue, younger people must join political parties. Because if you do not, the rate of fellows who are not gifted from the neck upwards and their readiness to join politics for purposes of expediency and enriching themselves mm -hmm. is alarming. Now, it's interesting, though, because it's one thing to say it. It's one thing to read it. It looks very good when they say, well, let's encourage the young people to take, um, in, you know, follow after uh, our, you know, our footsteps. But when you read some of this political analysis and uh, how remarks are made on the dais, we have even had elders coming to, you know, condemn some what they call disrespect by certain young uh, political leaders in some of these political parties. I don't understand. Maybe you could help us understand where do we draw the line between you trying to uh, walk in the footsteps and trying to grab the power disrespectfully from other politicians, hence causing a rift and disunity among Kenyans? Maybe before I answer that, allow me to respond to one issue just in one second. Anil Maliba, a very good friend of mine, said that as a me or Moja One Kenya is not a coalition, it's not a party going by the provisions of the Political Parties Act. I want to remind Anil Maliba to go and read Political Parties Act 2011 as amended in 2022, particularly section 2A and B that defines okay. what is a political party, an association of citizens with identifiable ideology or program that is constituted for purpose of influencing public policy or nominating candidates for election. And also it goes further in B and says that includes coalition political party. Then when you go further, it tells you why the coalition political parties are exempted from certain provisions of having to an at least uh, majority of offices in 24 counties. Arnold, that assignment, you do it tonight. Okay. Number three. Can you to two no, 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 just, just hold on. Can you belong to two parties? Let's proceed. No. Number two. In the ideology, you know, are you a member of coalition political parties, are you a member? membership are you a member? is by corporate. Are you a member? Is by corporate. Are you a member? Yes, I am a member by corporate. You're also membership. a member of Kanu, right? Yes, I am. No. So, 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 so what, what Arnold Maliba doesn't know is, you know, Arnold Maliba, I, I've known him as a researcher and somebody who is well read. I don't know why sometimes he wants to be linear in his argument. Anul Maliba, please, you need to change. As I proceed, you ask a very good question, Anki. You know, the young people in this country, I must commend them. Okay. The young people have always struggled to get a space. And in that space, they have given themselves an opportunity to grow politically, socially, and economically. And they are protected from the constitution by that. But in politics, no one gives you an opportunity. No one invites you to come and sit and say, Javas, today you are going to be party leader of party A. No one. And as I said, it is a competition internally and externally. And on Maliba here, I expect to be the deputy party leader of UDA in the coming elections. If he's not thinking about that, he should start thinking about that. But because he sits at an advantage point, he knows what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. What we are saying as young people particularly is that when we get in these political spaces, you must identify what you are passionate about in politics so that you pursue it to the 
last conclusion. And uh, the people who are seemingly uh, or are, vi are viewed to be disrespectful to the mm. old in politics are not doing so because they want to, but they're doing so as they fight for their space. I'll give an example. Young people in political parties, let me start by UDA. All right. Ndindi Nyoro, when he came out and started moving around, conversing issues and visiting universities, there are people in his party who are, not, who are not happy because they felt that how do you defy the party order and go and talk about some of these issues and we are here, but you know, the old. Babu Wino has also come out as a young person who believes in himself and is saying, if we are not on this table, we'll break the table. Those utterances that do not mean in any way that you are going to break the table, but it means that we must get a space on that table because in any case we are the majority. But remember, it is by law that you must protect the interests of young people. It is by law. So there's nothing like a request. It is a right as she said it. What we are saying going forward, Anki, yes. is that in politics, we want to see politics that is non-violent. We want to see politics that is inclusive. We want to see politics that is ideological. We want to see politics that is non-confrontational. But most importantly, we want to see honest politics. We have seen political parties in this country that are not honest. And I'll say that you cannot create a party today and fold it tomorrow. Interestingly, his party leader is one of the politicians in this country who has formed many parties, left many, and joined many. So we want to congratulate parties like Kanu, who have been there for the rest of their time, ODM, who have seen it all and transformed. We don't want to see quick fixes, vehicles into election, and then they, you break them, then you form another. We don't want to see that. But we can build those vehicles into a formidable force, either as coalition parties or coalitions. But beyond because that, there is something that we're missing, the failure of political parties. <coughs> failure of political parties. The failure of political parties. One thing, for example, in the past couple of weeks and months, we have seen the report of the Auditor General speaking to issues of uh, lack of accountability, mm. graft, which actually right now is stinking all the way to the high heavens. And when you look at where graft is reported, for example, even what the Auditor General picked out as CIA County, where some projects that are unfinished had been handed over. The question is this. These governors come from political parties, belong to political parties. With ideologies? Yes. What are these political parties doing to ensure accountability in service delivery for the benefit of Kenyans? The, beyond the issue of just having opportunities for people to rise, we expect much more from political parties. We want them to rein in on their members who are governors, for example, or members of the National Assembly, women representatives, MCS, who are underperforming because they are staining the name and the leadership and the places and the dignity of these political parties. These are things that we want to see. So that, for example, if, in the case of ODM here, if Oparanya wants to be governor, Joho, or rather, or wants to be party leader of ODM, or Joho, we should ask them, on the, space, on the space of accountability, effective service delivery for the benefit of the people, when they were governors in their respective counties, okay. how satisfactory were their services? Have there been critical audit queries? Are they therefore able to lead these political parties? And that's why when I look at political parties, I'm not just looking at it in terms of opportunities for leadership. Mm -hmm. When you talk about ideology, when you're talking about service delivery and public good and interest, then political parties, we need to see them call out their leaders who are serving, for example, as governors in various counties where the Auditor General has flagged issues, and frown at their approach to leadership and service delivery. These are things that should be sound and make sense to all of us and every citizen in this country. Uh, uh, Anki. Actually, Anki, I was next to go after him. I, and I, I, think, I, I, I think Josh has I been quite allowed, long. Unless you'll be very brief. I be allowed when I do an interjection as well. All right. Because as twice, Jesus has actually done an interjection, right. and his interjections have been allowed. <laughs> so, yes, but you see, so uh, my brother Madiba, that will be very wrong if you don't allow me to speak. Uh, no, it, yeah. I would so have please a allow me to proceed, and then uh, I, 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 will, I will give you a few your, minutes, your, your grievances have been taken, yes. and, and, and he has agreed them. that I should go next. So we have a good way you, of resolving and, uh, our issues. I will take a short breather. <laughs> I'll just say one thing, and it's so that I can yield the rest of the right. time to Maliba. 
And that is the fact that even as we say our political parties have failed, which we can agree to a great extent they have failed in terms of transitioning and succession, we also need to call ourselves to order as a country. You know, I remember in 1992 when Martha Karua walked out of Fodasili to join DP because she was dissatisfied with the manner in which her Fodasili then had conducted nominations. She was about 32 years old and people actually respected and she was elected on that um, new ticket, the DP ticket, to become the MP for Gishou. Now, when you look at uh, Meshuki, is it, um, sorry, Kibaki, he became an MP Donholm at the age of 32. Now you find young people who are 32, when they try to run for office or when they try to take over party leadership, they are told you're too young. So I think also as a country, yes, uh, Anki and you need to start doing a bit of politics here and there to actually see these things. So that you find someone who is 40 and they are told this one is 60, first let them do it, you still have time. We need to empower our people, our young people, and give them the opportunity and not ask them how much are you bringing because this 60-year-old is bringing money, is bringing this but and this and campaigns this. in this country are essentially expensive? So you agree with me that then we uh, are not doing enough because you find uh, even in the conversations we've seen even for instance in ODM um, where Honorable Babo you know is, is, is looking in a certain way where another uh, you know someone like Oparanya for instance looking in a certain way I hope uh, the various political parties will give room for the young people as well to grow and to be able to also bring in fresh ideas all right before I take a break in three minutes in two minutes I don't First of all, I just want us to put to bed some concepts here. First of all, when you talk about involvement and participation, young people are involved in politics. They're involved. Are they involved or are they shunning they are politics? They're very, very involved. Actually, they run the machinery of our politics when it comes to involvement. But let's also talk about meaningful participation. Mm. Because right. throwing stones cannot be quantified as participation. Just voting, mere voting, showing up, as the robots, that is not meaningful participation. So it's important to talk about. And when I, what I actually spoke about, I spoke about young people on the table of decision making. And that to make it there, it's not just a matter of constitutional pronouncement. We've got at Article 27.8, for example. We've been fighting to actually uh, bring parity in the National Assembly when it comes to, uh, to, uh, to genders. And it's actually been difficult. Unfortunately, you cannot deal with Article 27.8 without looking at Article 100. Somehow there has been that con game that every time the Article 100 groups try to actually work together, the women folk run away with Article 27.8. Uh, apparently they think that Article 27.8 can actually work alone. I say that because I've been in this particular business since 2014. All right. We would go to Naivasha, work as the Article 100 group, that is women, youth, persons with disabilities, uh, the minorities, and the marginalized. Five of them, the SIGs, as defined in Article 100. We sit together, come up with a, with, a, with a formula on how that will actually be taken care of, go to parliament, immediately it goes to parliament, they do away with all the other SIGs and run with 27.8 alone. So working alone, I think, and I also thank God that somehow trying to be selfish and work alone has stalled. And one of those problems, I, I know you are really, uh, Okango here is pushing for NADCO, one of the challenges he's going to have is that so long as Article 27.8 tries to do a sprint on its own, leaving behind the other groups in Article 100, they will not make it. They have tried and it's become difficult. Uh, so I need to, talk, to actually just put to, to bed that, that uh, involvement is there, but participation, we right. also have to show up uh, a little bit of much more than just saying there's Article 55, that uh, all other groups try out. Also, can we just be fair and yeah. say that there is also a huge number, a critical mass of young people who are working in political parties. There is literally, when we talk about the running of political parties, the people who man those offices, the people who do the logistics and everything, literally, that is also part and parcel of running the politics, are young people. Just because we don't like probably the brand of young people that are in politics, or somehow we went there and we were elbowed out, doesn't mean that there are no young people in politics. Quickly, I needed to say this. Mm -hmm. No, Jabez went around taking uh, uh, pop shots at myself and Okango and him. This man here was made, he did not even run, was made the Secretary General of MDG. Up Jabez? to now, yes, yes, he was made the MDG. And do you know what he did? 
he absconded duty like the doctors. He has not shown for duty for a very long time, and MDG does not have a, 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 a sitting Madiba, Surgeon General because Madiba, he ran away. That, that said, he used to be, MDG, and he ran away. Now you see. Now, he ran away. You, you are varying your oh, 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 So, Maliba. he ran away. So, let me just move on. When you Maliba, spoke, you I did not... Give him a right I, no, of no, 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 he, he didn't. He didn't give me. So, let me run. He will have his time to actually get, get back. All right, as we he says about that, in a, in a we sentence. who have run for offices are bold enough. She's run for office. I know him because he was my form one in high school. <laughs> he always threatens to run and doesn't run. He threatened to run in Nambale. He stopped short way. In high school, in Kakamega High School, we were with him. He will threaten to run as a prefect. He will stop. In high school, we used to run for office, by the way. He will threaten to run. He, he, will, he will threaten to run for councillor. Councillor was the, the softer version of prefects. He will not. I have been out here with him. So he should not even try to, to make fun about those of us who run. We run. That is why we are here. Finally, uh, allow me, uh, finally, okay. on Kanu. I just need to say this. That you see, today if you look at LSK, you know that LSK is more vibrant. If LSK were to be a party, it's actually a bigger party than Kanu. The rate at which Kanu is actually going down, now it's actually at the NGO level. Soon it will be a CBO. Because if Okango does not work at looking at how Kanu goes places, he's busy taking pop shots at UDA. Yet he's saying very little about his own constituent can, uh, party that actually has brought him here. You guys are letting this country down because Kanu is a treasure trove when it comes to the history of this country. Do not just come to try and paint UDA black. Also tell us what Kanu is doing. What right. policies they stand for? Are Where are they you going? Are, All right, gentlemen. So he I'll, used I'll, to be. I, I want to take a very short breather. Uh, we are coming back and I will want to hear from Thank Javas. Maliba, allow me. Not young. All of them. I need to actually say that. They're youthful. They, they these said people that are millennials. They might not be young. These people are millennials. And these millennials, if you ask the Maliba. Generation Z, us, these ones are the old people. Okay. The, the Generation Z or Z who are watching this morning should be part of the conversation online. Yes. But I'm sure that there is a need for right of reply after this break. Absolutely. And we'll also talk about the. The, 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 the bunge, all right? Uh, you know, a, a lot of things are coming on the table after this short break. Don't go too far away, including the museum and the soapbox. Don't go too far.